Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Here's why Seth Gordon is awesome and why you should care. If you're a coach or consultant or a small business owner, I want to introduce you to uh, Seth Gordon. He's a world-class author, and I think he's written about 18 books. I'm sorry, Seth, if you've written more. Uh, and marketing expert. He's actually been indicted into the Marketing Hall of Fame. And his blog is one of the few that I actually read daily when it arrives in my inbox. And his ideas are worth paying attention to. And they offer enough inspiration to, um, you know, people that are looking to grow their business. And let me tell you something, man. When, when, when you're out there, you know, trying to compete with the big players and you're trying to um, grow something that is remarkable um, as a coach or consultant, marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You know, you go from hiring and managing new stuff, you're balancing your books, you're driving growth and a whole lot more other things and other hats that you have to wear. And it actually feels like a constant balancing act where you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once. And at the end of the day, your real goal is just to help your clients and maybe grow your tribe of people that know, like, and trust your work. And you just want to spend much time as possible changing those people's lives and solving your tribe's problems. You don't want to waste countless hours each week tinkering uh, or navigating the complex world of online marketing. And you certainly don't want to be spending yet another minute on the phone having to beg people to hire your services. Unfortunately, you don't have to. You see, I um, started reading and listening to uh, Seth Gordon as soon as I got into this uh, digital marketing space. So I threw myself in this new line of work and I was reading everything on digital marketing that I could get my hands on up until I started working with some small businesses and I helped them achieve massive growth using this newfound knowledge. Now, some of the knowledge was reading from Seth Gordon, who frequently blogs about building a tribe, um, you know, and he mentions about a how a tribe is a group of people who support what you do and who are invested in your success. Um, and they become part of your personal uh, team. You know what I mean? So from a digital marketing perspective, I've found a lot of great takeaways from Seth. And the funny thing is he never blogs or writes specifically about social media marketing, advertising, or digital marketing, but his thoughts are so applicable to the situation that many of us, um, you know, coaches, consultants, and small business owners face on a daily basis. You see, Seth has been writing his blog, I think since since the 2000s or when the internet was actually formed and he writes a blog every single day all right his blogs are so short and concise but yet they're such full of deep insight if you hear some of the colloquies or some of the words that i speak about or talk about um you know they're all coming from you know, reading Seth over and over and over again. Um, you know, um, things like the idea virus or um, what else do I say that he says, talking about pri uh, tribes and, and, and things like that. I think in my bookshelf, and one day if you actually get the 
uh, chance to see a photo of me. I do have a few on the internet there. You will notice that I've got an extensive bookshelf behind me and I've got a dedicated um, corner for Seth Gordon. I've got his latest book. This is marketing and I'll be telling you a story about that book. And I've got the linchpin. I've got permission marketing. I've got small is the new big. I've got all marketers are liars. I've got the practice, which is what we are creating our business around and a compilation of all of his uh, blogs um, from uh, 2012 onwards uh, in the big thick uh, book called uh, Duck Duck. Uh, what would the duck do? Is that, uh, let me check. What? What are you going to do about that duck? Sorry about that. So like I said, he's frequently blogging about building a tribe, um, you know, and having these people as part of your own personal team. And, you know, you might be saying, ah, this is all great. We all know who Seth is. We all know that. But how do, you know, and, and you might be also asking, but how do I devote time and attention among the myriad of things that take my attention every single day to build a tribe? You might be thinking that to yourself. Why should I care about, um, you know, following up with people and actually building a tribe? Shouldn't people just fall in love with my product? Isn't that enough? And I find that a lot of coaches and consultants are too caught up in their own service and product so much that they don't even know who their ideal customer is they don't even know who they're talking to and that that in and of itself is very very dangerous because you're going to be um you know spinning your wheels constantly because people do not listen to marketing that is not directed at them and if you listen to podcast number 12 episode 12 season 2 uh, we're talking about um uh, you know uh, we were talking about referral marketing and how, you know, other people are talking about you, um, you know, enhancing your brand, which is what we're doing about Seth Gordon today on this podcast. And, you know, like you, you, you were asking me earlier on and saying, oh, why, how, where would I get the time to follow up on people? Where would I get the time to build a tribe? Shouldn't people just fall in love with my product? And isn't that enough? You know, and my answer to you is it's not enough. Even if your product is absolutely superior, whiz bang, you know, it's the latest and newest and, you know, what everybody else is crying for in the marketplace out there. McDonald's still advertise, you know, Nike still advertises, but who doesn't know what just do it means? You know what I mean? Even if your product is absolutely superior in every way, another you know, vendor or another suitor for your customer's attention is always in the wings. There's always somebody who can do it cheaper, better, faster than you can right now. Even the legendary Odessas had to fight off Penelope's 108 suitors after his absence. And if Odessas was forgotten, then it is a guarantee that you will be forgotten too. Out of sight, out of mind. All right. So that's why I created, um, you know, the online prosperity blueprint to really help you um, create content that will arm your ambassadors with information as to how they can talk about you in your absence. All right. And, you know, I actually received insight into how we all can afford the time necessary to build um, you know, our tribes last week, actually, and it, it, it doesn't require anything at all beyond just love and the resources that we already have. Building a tribe does not necessarily mean going to the town hall and yelling at the top of the voice, hey, follow me. Well, unless you're Jesus. But he already had ambassadors that were talking about his word before he arrived at that town hall. And all he just did was tell people to follow him because he, there was content that was already delivered to those that believed. All right. You know, 
Like I was saying, I received insight that we already have the tools, processes, and systems to really create for and relate to our audiences today. Because today, I actually sent uh, sent a short email to ask him where my new book was going to arrive because he, I just watched a video of him on, on, on Facebook. You know, and it was the middle of the afternoon and I knew obviously Seth would have uh, responded. Even if this was done by his assistant or him himself, um, you know, in the past I've heard that he responds to people's emails and usually within the hour. Now you can see this is an author of over 18 books and he's got all these public appearances and he's got you know, his blog to write, but he still finds time to respond to people who write to him. And... He does that within the hour, you know. All of these are friendly acknowledgements, um, you know, um, that he respects people that pay attention to him. And I didn't really expect a personal response about, you know, the book shipping. And yet, um, within about 30 minutes, he sent a pleasant email back and he said, um, you know, the books were on their way in a few days, um, even though, he wasn't the person who sent this, um, you know, this this message, but it, it, it just had the right information that I needed at that particular moment. And especially from him, this response was pleasant and helpful. Now, I'm asking myself, what if us as coaches, consultants and small business owners made a point to make sure that our email addresses were publicly available to those that are already paying us? And we personally responded to the emails that we received, you know? And what if we made sure that every email was responded within a few hours and that every um, email from potential clients will be treated as though they were emails from close friends? I mean, we all have the capacity to do this. You know, if a busy author and public speaker can answer his emails within 30 minutes, I, I, I think the rest of us can manage pretty well. You know, our customers and our potential customers will be bright and shiny advocates of our products and our personal brands. Then it makes it super easy for us to actually start marketing out there. And perhaps more importantly, they would also become our friends and eventually join our tribes. You know, I for one, I'm going to give um, this a shot to be able to respond to people on my Facebook and my email. I mean, within reason. And I know definitely since I'm putting out a podcast every single day, I will let you know how this is going for me. And if any of you try this, if you try this today and, and or if this is your current policy, please let me know how it's working for you. Because for me, this actually changed the game. Because if, like I said, you know, a very uh, busy and prominent public speaker, somebody in the marketing hall of fame, decides to return um, or respond to emails, not just mine, but other people as well. That says a lot about his dedication to his craft. You know, and like I said, it's, it's not it, it, what he writes and what he talks and how what he does uh, is not specifically about social media, but, he, he, you know, his thoughts and his actions are so applicable to many situations that we uh, go through as coaches, consultants, and uh, small business owners. How many people are requesting, um, you know, for our services and even just making inquiries and we're ignoring them because they are not an immediate customer to us? Because whenever somebody comes through and whenever you um, get an opportunity to hear from someone who who is asking about your service, ask yourself this question, what can I learn from this? You know, and if that person is not the right target market for you, find out what is actually great about this person reaching out to you because maybe you need to just put content out there so that people can consume it so that they don't then reach out to you asking you frequently asked questions. Put this as an experiment, you know, because at the end of the day, we are out there testing things that don't actually matter, but we're not testing our response rate. We're not testing how many people um, end up just sending us an email of an inquiry. Sure, go ahead and test what's testable, but the real victories come when you've got the guts to launch the untestable. How many times are you 
um, going to ask yourself what the amount of inquiries that you're receiving that are not directed, you know, towards a purchase. What is not yet perfect in your sales cycle? Because you could do all the planning that you want on social media or on your website or whatever it is. But the problem is you are dealing with people here and people, um, you know, people have a different mindset. They have a different understanding level. And hopefully you are also trying to socialize with them so that you can understand who they are, what it is that is going on with them in order for you to be able to solve their problems. And in the social landscape, which changes with every tweet that is put out there without any experimenting and doing things that are untestable. Some people cannot go ahead because it is not going to be in the test later. You know, you know how when we were learning things as growing up and we would ask our teacher, hey, would this be in the test? And if it's not, then we wouldn't find ourselves um, you know, dedicated to learning the, those aspects of mathematics or geography just because we're not going to be tested about them later. We are out there, uh, you know, looking at impressions, follow account and all of those things. But none of that matters if people are not writing to you and asking you questions and asking you if you're the right person to help them solve their problems. So we need to be out there building our tribe. And I think I read somewhere where Seth Gordon said the magic of the tribe is that you can build it incrementally. You know, that that day by day, you can earn the asset which will allow you to bring um, your work to people who want it. Because you keep on doing work that matters for people who care. And day by day, you start earning the permission for you to reach out to an audience because you have given them so much the only way they can reciprocate is with their credit card. Or you can skip that and wait to get picked. You can skip that and wait for some uh, authority to come uh, knocking on your house's door and say, hey, your turn now. Your time has arrived. You can wait to be picked up, um, you know, as Amazon's best seller. Or you can just publish an, an, a Kindle and provide it to those that want the information without you waiting to be on Oprah's book list or waiting to be on America's Idol for you to put out that song that is probably going to change Sally's heart, who is heartbroken. Oh, just waiting and waiting and waiting up until you wait no more. Getting picked is great. But these days with so many platforms, with so many opportunities for us to reach to our audience, I find that it is lazy for you not to reach out to your audience, for you not to create a podcast like this, for you not to blog, for you not to create content. In any case, any content or anything that you're putting out there is building for you a permission asset that you can actually go and cash in because income follows assets. So like I said, getting picked is great, but building a tribe is reliable. It is a lot of hard work, but it's worth doing. All right. So anyone who's read the classic book, um, I think it's called Tribes, really understands that the potential, um, you know, for, for digital marketing or for social media to help you provide the infrastructure to, to create a tribe is immersed. This podcast here, we have listeners that are growing by the day and I feel obligated to show up for them every single day. And that ideally, um, you know, um, that community turns into fans and then those fans actually then turn into paying customers. So unless you want to get rich quick, you know, building a business is like a marathon and building a tribe on digital marketing platforms or on your podcast or on social media will take time, but it can help you create a true platform of friends who will reward you over the, um, the years and, 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 and months to come, you know? Because if you're creating content there, you're creating an opportunity for people to find you. Good content is now the new 
um, SEO. Because I've changed SEO to, to mean simply educating others. And how do you educate others with content? I definitely resist the temptation to optimize, um, you know, my blogs or this podcast just for traffic and, 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 you know, just getting, uh, impressions. I'd rather force myself to improve it by having the guts to, to speak and create more episodes and write better, um, content instead. We are an SEO agency uh, ourselves and too many people come to us wanting to instantly, um, you know, uh, go on the top of search engine rankings. Too many people, they're focusing on SEO without focusing on content marketing. Because if, if content is the new SEO, you know, your content is what should separate you from the, from the competition. The quality of it, the quantity of it, the frequency of it and how much you actually care because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Because if you're showing up every single day, that's your subconscious way of telling people that I really care about your growth and I'm not going to let you uh, go at this alone. So once you now have, um, um, you know, this opportunity to create for and relate to your audience, you become a leader, not a follower. You become a producer and not a consumer. Because every brand, every coach, every consultant out there, every organization and every individual is either running away from something or running toward something or working far too hard to stay in the same position. Because that's work too. So you want to ask yourself, are you chasing or are you being chased? Are you leading or are you following? Are you fleeing or are you climbing? Are you growing or are you not growing? You never find a tree that is put out there um, and, 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 and wondering, oh my God, what am I going to do? Um, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't rained for a couple of days. Should I grow or should I not? I want to tell you something. Almost every consultant or coach out there um, that I work with, will be a pioneer in the industry um, if they implement whatever strategy that they're coming up with uh, according to plan. Because each and every one of us has different ways of um, looking at whatever problems that we're solving in the marketplace there. Why? Because most of the competition is either fleeing from the hard work or doing the bare minimum just to try to show people that they are relevant. Guess what competition? It's not working. You want to be there for the people that you're going to be claiming money from. So that's why you need to engage your customers and you definitely want to increase that engagement and the conversations that are happening around your brand and your services. Because the customers that you fire are those you know, you, you, you pay attention to. At the end of the day, we need to be creating for and relating to our audience. Because in digital marketing or on podcasting, or on blogging or on YouTube, you truly get what you deserve. Treat your customers right and they will spread, you know, the, the, the word around what it is that you're doing. Ignore them and you ignore them at your own peril. Ignore them when they try to engage with you and, and, and that message will be sent to their tribes. You know, half of the time when people are ignored, they will find somebody who will listen to them. And guess what? That person ha doesn't have your best interest uh, at heart. So do something in, 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 you, know, um, in, in you know, nicely. All right? And don't forget if we're out there, that social media is all about the social aspect. It's not a look at me, um, you know, radio broadcast. Because the experience I have with you as a customer or friend is far more important than a few random beats uh, flying by on the screen. 
You know, the incredible surplus of, uh, you know, digital data means that human actions, the, our generosity um, and sacrifice are more important than ever before. What you do matters. Who you speak to matters and how you speak to them matters. Because look at this, we're spending more and more time on the internet and, and on social media. So our world is becoming increasingly digital. And I think as we, um, as you're listening to this podcast, we're already living in what's called the metaverse, where digital has met the real world. And guess what? You can only win true fans for your business by truly being social and being human. And that's how you build a tribe of people that are consistently referring your work to their uh, loved ones. You know, generosity right now means you're showing up every single day and let other people broadcast your message for you. Let other people be the ambassadors for your word. You know, the goal shouldn't be to have a lot of people you yell at on, on your social media. The goal probably should be to have a lot of people who choose to listen. And you don't need a, a horn or a microphone for that. You know? So you really want to notice who it is that is in your tribe and help them to amplify your message. And one thing that you need to do is you have to be bigger than your brand in social media. Because a great brand represents something bigger than themselves. And you can create this accidentally if you're lucky, but you can create it on purpose if you actually give it a try. You know? If you only talk about yourself on social media, nobody's listening. Have you ever been at a dinner table when there's that uncle who always talks about themselves? Social media is made for people and not for brands. And more importantly, if you're trying to reach out to others and build a tribe for your brand on social media, you need to be bigger than your own company. You need to represent your, your industry. You know, you need to have a lifestyle that is larger than life. And you need to have a solution to a bigger problem than you just wanting money in your pocket. You need to become a resource for others, uh, you know, that are lost in the digital space and help them make sense of the world around them. And your brand will be rewarded hand handsomely. And that's the reason why everyone else's content is king on social media, not your content. All right. So at the end of the day, we all have, um, you know, these things in order for us to create for and relate to our audiences. So you want to use social media, your podcast, your blogs to build your own unique tribe. And just, you don't have to do it with millions of people like Kim Kardashian. Just do it 10 people at a time. You know, instead of speed dating your way to interrupting people that are having conversations already on the internet, and instead of yelling at um, strangers all day trying to make a living, you know, coordinating of um, a, a tribe of 1,000 true fans that pay, stay, and refer requires patience, consistency, and a focus on long-term relationships with people, um, you know, while you're looking at the lifetime value of that client. Let me tell you something, and according to Seth Gordon, you don't find customers for your products. You find products for your customers. All right? So at the end of the day, they say that you're going to need 1,000 true fans that pay, stay, and refer. Just start from there and build out your fan base through leading and providing value and actually engaging and doing all that. Those are the great things that you can do for free. Um, you know, utilizing the social media and digital marketing platforms that we have. It used to cost a lot of money for me to speak like this in a microphone. I'd have had to go to a, a studio. I would have had to um, had some equipment so that I can pass on these frequencies. But what, what did you do? You just clicked a link and now you're getting all this amazing information that I've curated for you. All right. So when you also go out there and create this engaging um, content and you're doing all these other great things that we spoke about and it's all for free. The 
only investment that you need to put in is your sweat equity. I really hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as, as much as I enjoyed uh, talking about my great mentor, Seth Gordon, and all his uh, posts and really revealing to you how they resonate with me and how I hope that you can also pick up on, on what I'm dropping down here, you know? Or oh, if you're already listening to him, are there any other blog posts that you particularly uh, recommend so that I can better understand the work that I'm doing out there? Which ones are your favorite? Please uh, write back to me and let me know that. You know, I really want that you, you win in this game. I really want that you are creating for and relating to an audience. And I really want that you're doing this in such a way that, um, you know, you, you are going to be spoken about and remarked upon just simply because you're doing work that matters for people who care. All of this stuff has been uh, derived from the work of Seth Gordon. I don't intend for me to plagiarize or to use it as if it's my own. I owe uh, a lot of my uh, depth and knowledge in marketing to Seth Gordon. So thank you so much for tuning into this podcast today. And I attribute, um, you know, all of this work uh, to the mighty brain of Seth Gordon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital Community. Become a Live Long Digital Community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital Community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.